Hi, it's Joe Glines, and uh, I'm going to review a little stuff I learned um, over the Thanksgiving break here with GUIs. So for years, and, and I stayed away from GUIs forever um, because I they're just very time-consuming to me, and, and I had a lot of problems understanding the flow of things, which I'm not going to explain that in this video, but um, just updating them, right? So like in this example here, let me reload this. All I have here is, so this keeps it always on top. Um, I don't really don't need the resize, but that's in there. And I'm coloring the background to, to just to give it some context to make it easier to spot. Um, and then the show, of course, brings it up. Now this is just, I'm adding in some text, right? And here, I've told it the XY coordinates. And this is what I want to cover, because what I've done in the past is anytime I add a uh, an edit field or a button or text, and I, I need to move them around, it's very tedious to like keep track of you know where they're lined up oh I add something up above it now I, I gotta add let's say I decide later that um, I hadn't thought it through and I need another text here we'll call that zero and this is gonna be let's say it's at a I don't know, um, well we'll keep the X the same right 20 and we'll say 15 is where it needs to go right I reload it oh look now they overlap now I gotta adjust the others and granted when there's three things it's still not that hard but um in the long run if you when you have a lot of stuff it's really time consuming and tedious so auto hotkey let me I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of all this stuff I have some my script down below to play with here they have some um some very nice built-in uh, features so this one Oh, <laughs> let me uh, go ahead and get rid of these. So here, right now, we just have all these eight different text items, right? So it's basically the same thing I just showed you, uh, except for now I'm not specifying the XY at all. And I have I have written out a couple cheat sheet notes for myself. So first off, in Auto Hotkey, their GUI control positions, they start from the top to bottom and then they may work from left to right so I should put a few exclamation points in here because you always keep this in mind this is how it works right the, um, now margins right this is a cool I think cool pretty cool feature that once you understand it it's easy to do and tweak so XM positions control at the leftmost right so it's gonna bring it over this way all the way along here and YM will put it up along the top so, as a real simple example here, let me go for this text 4, right, and here, I'm going to put YM here as an option, right? Save it. Now, when I reload it, watch what happens to where the 4 is. So, it it went 1, 2, 3, but then it saw that YM, and M was saying the margin, and it said, okay, let me put this at the next um, Y over, so it's basically starting a new column, right? So, that YM... And if I did it again down here on this one, save reload. So notice how it's 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 dealing with some padding in here, which is nice. But it'll it'll automatically if you had if all this stuff was the same size font, it's going to keep them lined up because this spacing is built in Auto Hotkey, and I'm just telling it make it at the top, right? Start at the top, and um, it'll automatically align as you put other things in there. So that comes in very handy. But what if um, we the the XM is much more. It'll move it back to the left. So I'm gonna save it, reload it. Let's let's do this. Let's put in here. So maybe this will make sense here. So I'm gonna put a YM here. Let me reload it just so you can see it. Move that over a little. And this is gigantic text, I'm sure. So we won't need that. In here, let's start back here in XM and let's see what this is gonna do. So this is on text five, right? Where do we think this is gonna go? Well. XM is for the left side, right? So it theoretically should put it right over here. Let me reload it. And notice, now it brought everything back that follows it back to there, right? So I basically said, go here, one, two, um, go up to the Y margin, do three, four, and then I said, hey, go back to the X margin. And so it puts it back over here, back in line with the other stuff, because I didn't specify one, so th these, are, these first ones are at the X margin. Uh, but but it'll keep in line, and then let's say here I went back and added a YM, right? And then it puts those other ones back over um, 
seven starts back up here. And I know this is a crazy flow, right? I don't think I'd ever design it this way. But I, when I read the documentation, it was not clear to me what what the documentation was trying to imply. So, um, and also you can you can add in a plus or a minus. Let's let's do that real quick. Y M. Oops, plus twenty. And just to make it easier to follow, I'll get rid of these two, right? So the YM plus 20, right? It said YM, and then I said, okay, plus 20. So it just dropped it down to 20. Um, and, and I think, let's say if we, uh, well, let's just show you. So here's 10, and you'll notice this 4 moves up a bit. Um, or it sure should have. Did I save it? Yeah. Let's say minus ten. Okay, so were we on the three? That was. I'm on the three. That's why I was confused. So, plus. Ooh, hey, plus twenty. <laughs> I just realized where. So where is the three? Y M plus ten. Let's try minus 10. So the minus is, um, boy, was it putting it up above it? That doesn't make sense to me. Clearly I don't play a lot with this, so that's minus 20. Zoom back a little more. Whoops. Let's try plus 2. 1, or fire enough. So there's 1. Where's that three going? That is crazy to me. Do I need to have it right? I don't think I need to have it right next to it. Ah! Okay, keep it right next to it. Um, so let's try a 30. That's what it was. My bad. Need to have them right next to each other. So it make sure it understands it's supposed to be adding those, concatenating them together. Um, or adding, doing some math there. So let's try a pl um, plus... 10, gives it a little bit of space, right, so um, that is what this comment was um, talking about here, so it's YYM without any exposition, so and this is what we just covered, I rewrote these to, um, let me zoom out a little more so they fit in well, I guess it's, I rewrote the stuff in AutoHotKey, so to me they made a little more sense. Um, so, the, so the YM will basically start a new column, and the XM will basically start a new row. Now, let's get into sections. So, sections is S, right? And S is in, used in conjunction with section. So, again, you know what, let me, this, since this little, little screen capture will make this stay on top, and now we'll come back to here, and just to have it, alright, so now we're back to the norm, and I'll make this text small, smaller, so if I add a section here, the word section, right, um, it's going to look like nothing happened because I didn't, I didn't, um, assign the things that follow it now, if I remember right, so if I say YS, right, it starts following um, that section, right, going across. So again, YS, right, it's putting them over in a, in a new column, but this is its own section. Um, and then let's say I'm going to create another section, and, and we'll do YS here so we can see how that flows, right? So they basically start new sections, and then it says go ahead and continue on after that. Um, now let's change these to X, although I think that does something a little, yeah, it keeps them in the same column, so um, let's first put in the Y, I don't think we really need to have, there we go, now it's acting really crazy, because it put it back <laughs> into uh, a new column, but these YS, um, the section and the YS and XS can, can help you build a little area where you want to work in. And that section 
the word section. If I remember right also, this is the other thing that's not not quite intuitive to me. So see how section here is tied to four? Um, in my head, I would have thought I would have put the break before it, but basically you're starting a new section on four, and so it puts four as its own section, and then the stuff after it, right? Um, we'll get rid of this, this, this. Reload. Now see how it's putting them over. So uh, again, it just it can make it very easy to keep your text lined up and put it where you want it. Um, now let's read what this had said. So why is there somebody X and so the the coordinates were out of the controller word section? Again, we can have the plus and minus to it. Um, all right. Now let's go back over to here. Now the previous. This is the last one I'm going to cover, and it's for a group box. And now that I think about it, hopefully it's still in here. And it's not. Um, let me find it real quick. Okay, so here is a little um, GUI with a group box. Right now, the the previous command is very handy with the group box. Because basically, it says, "Hey, look at the thing I made before, and then base the new x y coordinates off of where that was, plus or minus whatever you do." Right. So here, I I threw in a group box, and a group box really is just a, a an outline of a box. Right. That's all it is. But what happens? Let me cut this real quickly here. Save, reload. See when I don't use anything to, to tell it where to put this, it's going of course going to build the group box first, and here I have it at Y10 to X130, that's why it's moving it over and down a little bit, but then it puts the, the radio buttons, it adds them, because I didn't tell it where to put it, right, oops, it's adding them um, after it. And now the problem is, of course, I would want to you know, the old way I would do this is say, okay, that was Y10, I'll make this Y, I don't know, 25 and Y35, right, and try to put it in here, but then when you move it, then you got to move up in all the numbers. Well, if you put this, if you use the, uh, the previous, right, command, now when I reload it, it puts them in here the way that we want it. And now this, of course, if I wanted the, um, it a little further, or to separate them, I could... I could um, just say here, I think, like y plus 5, and then I'll move the second one down a little bit there, I think. Yeah, so that's separating them up a bit, right? So you just have to do the previous one, and after that, the second one will be tied to which one that one was. So here's the, the beauty of this, right? So let's say I decide my whole group needs to be further down on the page, like let's say at 100. Now when I reload this, see it moved everything. It moved both my group box and this text, and of course, so let me go through it one at a time. It first said, where do you put this group box? And then it said, okay, where do I put my next radio box? Oh, I'm going to base that off of where my previous item was, uh, control was, and so it's going to go down to the 100, and then say add 25 to that, right, and place it here. Um, and then move it a little bit to the right. And then this one is based off of, of course, automatically, just because it's it's in the next, it's in the same section and everything, it just puts it beneath it. So it starts from there. So I don't have to use previous on that one. I guess it's implied. I think if I still put it like this, this should do the same thing. Oh, moved it a little closer. Um, boy, is that maybe going off the... I don't think... That shouldn't be going off the group box. I think that would still go off of... Uh, yeah, because they would have been over over each other. But anyway, it it's it's very handy to use the previous command with a group box because that way, regardless of where you put this, we'll put this here and here. It it moves it all together, and that's it for this video. Thanks.